I have covered many species in recent history, each with a unique story to tell. Thanks to the rise of VR chat and the furry fandom, the Vali have become a common sight these days. However, these adorable little space raptors have evolved far from their original designs. With the creator stood back though, the community has been the driving force behind their continuation. Today we are going to dive into where the Avali, also known as the Iubati, came from. Hello first from the web, my name is Scar, and this is the story of the Avali. Stay tuned. The Avali can trace their origins back to a game called Spore, released in 2008. Spore was a game focused on allowing players to simulate life and build unique species for themselves all the way up to the galactic level. It's a very open-ended experience that includes various types of gameplay spanning from real-time strategy to action-adventure. A player of this game, Ryujin Zero, who I'm going to refer to as Ryu, became a fan pretty quickly. During her playthroughs, they constructed one species in particular among her other creations. This would become known as the Iubati, not Lubati as many people misread it. These critters were created around a loose concept she had brainstormed in the past. Inspired by a race of bird-like dinosaurs known as the Bambi Raptor, she considered for a moment what a race of more human-like intelligent feathered raptors would look like. Questions were asked such as how they might differ from humans in their path of life, and how might that alter their perception of the cosmos. In the pre-spore era though, their concept was very loose with no firm design or lore to really speak of. Originally titled the Elysi, named after their homeworld of Elysium, a hiccup during their development in-game forced the species moniker of Iubati. Ryu intended to alter their name, but didn't realize that once you entered the space age, you couldn't rename them. Shortly after, in late 2008, the first Iubati was uploaded to Sporpedia, an online index of creations made in the game. The Iubati, out of many other creations, landed on the front page of Sporpedia, forever associating the name of Iubati with the new species. To make things worse, because of the sans serif font used by the website, most people mistook the I for an L. This is the reason why many people, even today, mispronounce the Iubati as Lubati. Eventually, Ryu caved in and canonized the name as she started developing lore around the species. Spore as a game doesn't have much in the way of storytelling, so not much was taken into the future of the Iubati. However, some concepts that carried forward would include the prevalence of neural augmentation, the tendency to hunt in packs, and aspects of their biology. Two months later, she decided to rebuild them from the ground up with a second generation take on the species. A feral, more distant cousin was also developed during this era. More iterations would come in mid-2009, including the fourth generation design in June. More variations would arrive as well, all based on the newly revised version. These would include a female designer, engineer, paladin, and more with the arrival of the game's new DLC. In June of 2009, Spore received an expansion pack titled Galactic Adventures. This expanded the original game's ideas, but allowed players to build and script custom adventures. Fully packed with a level editor and a complex tools kit, these missions would take place throughout the galaxy and allow Space Age creations to play on them like an action-adventure game. Ryu began to work on her own project, one that would lay some groundwork for the species and bring them to life in a new way for other players. Whom Gods Destroy has over time become praised as one of the best adventures out there in the game. It put the player into the role of a captain who was investigating an artifact they detected on a barren world, only to discover a top-secret colony of Iubati. All of the inhabitants appear to be fitted with neural implants, of which the local crystal is a primary component. The artifact shares a composition with these crystals and is transmitting a signal directly into their heads. The end comes with a twist that the artifact was affecting everyone and the captain had fallen into its trap. Hallucinating, the captain you play as to try and save them only ended up murdering everyone in the process. The finality sees the captain leaving, the only one aware of what happened to the colony. It truly is a tragic end to a story that earned respect among the players who played it. Over time, the adventure has also received updates that improved its flow and mechanics, such as fixing a puzzle that confused many players. The modern version, 3.0, has the same plot as the original though, and for the interested people, you can still download it and play it provided you own a copy of Spore and its expansion. At some point in the later stages of the Spore era, the homeworld name was changed to Avalon. Since a lot of lore was still fluid during this time period, things were changing before they would eventually get nailed down. The Avali name was based upon the new homeworld, similar to the old Elysi moniker. 
Among the last of Ryu's contributions to Sporpedia, the Yuvali Knight made an appearance in late 2010, the first entry to use the new title as opposed to the old Iubati name. Avali became the canon choice going forward, and the Iubati title was left behind. Ryu today still views the Iubati title as an embarrassing mistake, and that's why it's been left behind to the books of history. The world of the Avali would soon be shelved for a couple of years, as Ryu moved away from Spore. They began playing and modding other games in their spare time. The Avali would not be gone long though, as they would be renewed in an upcoming game as a highly popular race mod. In the years after Spore, Ryu spent a considerable amount of time delving into mod making and modding communities. Although focused on experiences such as Neverwinter Nights and the catalog of Bethesda Game Studios, another game was on the horizon which would catch her attention. Starbound was an indie crowdfunded project that was developed by Chucklefish Games, and first entered public beta at the tail end of 2013. The game was a side-scrolling action-adventure set in a procedurally generated universe with an emphasis on story and a building in a sandbox environment. Ryu began development on a mod to bring the Avali as a playable race into the game. The Avali were not like their Spore ancestors, though, undergoing a major visual change. They became much sleeker, with more humanoid proportions and less brutish aesthetics. Ryu began to lay some foundational lore for the species, setting them up as a primitive species that was technologically uplifted by another highly advanced race. As a result, they retain a lot of their tribal culture, but have been flung into the spacefaring age. With the improved art skills of their creator, the Avali were visualized with custom sprites for both their bodies and equipment. An early version of the mod was uploaded in January of 2014, introducing the community to the rebooted world of fluffy nomadic space raptors. Like its predecessor, the Avali mod rose high in popularity. The development would continue for the following months, introducing more features and visual elements. Alongside this, the lore would continue to be developed into something more substantial. A wiki was created to help index the information about the species, collating a lot of the information going forward. For the first time, players were able to properly customize the Rivali protagonist in the game as well. Although you could play as them in Spore Galactic Adventures by selecting them as your captain, players were restricted to the uploaded variations on Sporepedia. Ryu also constructed the lore in such a way that unique stories could be told with a lot of variation and not break the canon. Throughout the Starbound era, she highly encouraged other people to go crazy with concepts and tell their own stories. Development on the mod would continue with several new releases up until April. Although she hadn't completed her entire vision for the project, she chose to step back. The community continued on, though, alive and kicking. According to Ryu, the mod topped popularity charts for over a year, long after development had ceased. At some point, because of a community request, the developer reached out directly to Ryu with an offer to implement the Avali as an official race into the game. This had been happening with some other race mods at the time, so it wasn't completely out of the question. Discussions were held about the complexities of the species, specifically those stemming from its digigrade profile. When the offer came through, though, Chucklefish were asking for her to pass on the entire Avali IP and all the legal rights that come with it. What would she get in return? Little more than a screen name posted in the credits, and no monetary compensation. Quote, Oh, we can't pay you, it'd just be for the exposure, getting your name in the credits of a major title, unquote. A little more than unsatisfied, she declined that offer, and she would step back from the community a little more in the coming years, but did remain semi-active in a few places such as the wiki. In 2015, members of the community banded together to form the Avali Triage Project, dedicated to continuing the development of the race mod. The initiative was taken during a time where Ryu was out of the loop, although upon her return she did endorse it. She kept in contact for a while but left later on because of personal reasons. Still, a split was made between the future fan-created content and what was considered proper canon. The Valley community was growing large. In the coming years, unofficial mod projects would also spring up for Stellaris and Wimworld. Although fading in and out of the community, Ryu would begin work on a new wiki powered by Wikidot. It had the goal of creating a comprehensive look at the lore over the species. Fandom, unlike Wikidot, also had a lot of advertising and offered very little control over the format. For these reasons, the shift was made behind the scenes. Unfortunately, it was never finished, and ultimately would become private down the road. The community's growth was immense, but not without some conflict. The following years would lead to a gradual but massive change for the Valley's future. With loose restrictions placed on the IP, many would expand the race beyond Ryu's work and bring it into a new era. Ryu had cultivated a large community around the Avali, although she herself faded in and out of activity over the months. 
The precedent she set, though, encouraged the community to craft their own stories in her absence. The continuation of her mod, the Valley Triage Project, was just one example of things to come. As I mentioned before, other major projects sprung up. The Stellaris mod brought the Avali into the game, as well as two empires with them. Rimworld's project had been helmed by a few different people over the years, but worked to bring the Space Raptors into the building sim gameplay. Avali could be also found anywhere from Kerbal Space Program to Second Life. As a few years passed, Avali fursuits even began to sprout up, such as Jester, who debuted in 2017 from Kama Crazy Studios. Unfortunately, the community, as with Annie, was not devoid of drama. The wiki would occasionally see edit wars with fans trying to include their own unofficial content. Sometimes this was more minor, like an interpretation of the brain structure which was later removed. Most infamously, there were a few instances of people defacing the biology page by highly sexualizing the species. An incident I looked up in 2019, which I'm going to censor, was quite unfiltered in a very middle school level way. A few dramas also contributed to Ryu's eventual decision to step back from the community as well. One thing that caught the attention of Ryu was Valve's implementation of paid mods to Steam in April 2015. I think before you jump on the train against them, it's important to understand that the perspective of this she probably had. Mod developers put an insane amount of work into the experiences they create, and there is an appeal to being able to make some income off of that work. It can allow you to do more work than you might have normally been able to do, similar to how some mod creators now have Patreons and do work as on mods as like a part-time job. Mods traditionally have always been free though, and, and Bethesda's various attempts at paid mods over the years have been polarizing, which is where Valve's integration ultimately started. Large amounts of the community opposed the idea entirely, and more contemporary alternatives like Patron weren't yet around. Besides that, there were growing personal and creative differences between Ryu and some prominent members of the community. This in conjunction with some other reasons are the reasons she ultimately left. With the creator gone, things shifted to the community being led by its own members. Granted, the community had always been self-reliant for a while, but now they were truly kind of on their own. Time passed, and the community thrived in its own little bubble of the fandom. A new era of the community was approaching, too. As of 2021, Ryu entered the Ivali IP into the Creative Commons under the CC BYSA license. This opens up the species and its lore to be used by anyone so long as they credit her, and anyone else's work that they build upon. This also includes both non-commercial and commercial uses as long as attribution is included. You can publish novels, sell characters, or even create custom merch now. Just a few months ago, in January of 2023, a new lore book was released known as Todd's Comprehensive Guide to Avali Lore. A lot of this material isn't derived from the original canon, but it has generally been accepted as a baseline going forward by many people. There is of course discussion about whether or not it should be treated as canon since it was made in the absence of the original author, but ultimately it's up to the individual how they want to receive what is essentially a handbook on the entire race. Toward the end of the 2010s, the community was heading towards a huge community shakeup. With the emerging platform of virtual reality, the furry fandom had a very niche subgroup that was slowly growing steadily every year in VRChat. Outside of some viral memes, VRChat was still rather new and an unheard of platform. A few members of the Avali community would gravitate towards it, and in doing so would forever change the community going forward. In early 2019, a 3D artist from the Avali community created what was likely the first Avali model built specifically for VRChat. Dashi created a small Discord server known as the Avali Army to serve as the hub for its users. This model would see a lot of use until it was succeeded by Dashi's Diwali model, which would also become known as 1.4. The model saw increasing popularity among the VRChat furry community, and the naming convention used would be followed as more models were created. Over the months, many different artists began creating their interpretation of the Avali, with many different models being present today. The Not Vali, Rose Vali, Javali, and Jerry Avali are just a few of the dozen or more variations you can find. Quite possibly the most popular, the Kita Vali has a large market for add-ons, having players create their own unique look. Other discords have sprung up for the other Avali models too, including the Kita's Birdhouse. VRChat as a platform exploded as the pandemic unfolded in 2020. With the lockdowns and endless cancelling of conventions, many looked at this burgeoning medium that offered a promise of simulating face-to-face -face social interaction. As a result, VRChat began to explode in the furry fandom with the start of the virtual evolution. Avali, as one of the earlier avatar models to arrive in the game, received a lot of attention in a new community. Avali, among a pool of other base models, would remain among the most popular. I have an hypothesis as to why this might be, but obviously it should be taken with a grain of salt. 
The Diwali, as well as a few others, are free to use. Most paid models have a price tag with them, and when so many are interested in creating their unique look in such an immersive medium, Diwali present an option that is both free and unique when compared to more common species. Although the numbers aren't staggering, the Avali VR community continues to grow and has become a sturdy subgroup of VR chat and other platforms like Neos and Chill Out VR. The Avali Army Discord has grown immensely, with nearly 10,000 members. The Avali Triage created their own Discord as well, which is sitting at just over 1,600 members. Another community that popped up was Lords of Floof. Although it started life as a Dark Souls 3 server of all things, the owner Lawe changed it in 2019 to an Avali centric community that it is now. Sitting at just under 2,500 members, Lords of Floof has focused on hosting a variety of community events where members can meet up and make new friends. With the recent addition of in-game groups, some other groups have begun to rise like the Avali and Verified Avali, led by Lavi Starlight. Ferality, a virtual convention hosted in VRChat, has also included dedicated Avali meetups. VRChat's popularity has introduced the Avali to many new people, myself included, and con has continued to propel their growth forward. Although the Starbound modding community continues, it's ultimately virtual reality that has carried the Avali into the limelight. The creator is still around, but has ultimately taken a step back and chosen a more quiet life. Where the community is headed, only time will tell, but I think it's fair to say that the Avali will be around for many more years to come. I owe a tremendous thanks to my friend Yippie and Ryu, the species creator, for helping me with this video. Both of them have done a lot to contribute and help me create the most thorough look into the species' history on the platform. Stay tuned in the near future where I'm going to be discussing my future plans on YouTube. Don't worry, it's just about all good news. Depending on how things go, I'm highly considering making a part 2 video where I look into the lore of the Avali, both the canon and the fanon. If you are new here, consider subscribing, and until next time guys, I will see you later.